Hi everyone, I'm Jessica. Today I'm working on piecing. We're working on week one of this quilt right here, the Stargazer quilt, but I'm making a Halloween version. So I wanted to show you what mine looks like as we go. And so this week we're strip piecing the strips and we're making the nine patches here in this quilt. They're red and then they have little pink accents, uh, but mine's gonna be black and yellow. So let me show you what I'm making. I'm working on cutting out the Stargazer quilt today. I'm using Halloween fabrics, as I mentioned before, and um, I have more fabrics than I need for this because I'm pulling from my stash and my scraps and I want it to be really scrappy. So here I have my yellows. I have the pattern up on my computer. I'm substituting um, yellow for pink. That's what I decided to do. So I have my yellows here and I'm ready to cut them. I have starry yellow and the rest are all from the new Halloween collection. Um, by Ruby Star. So I'm going to cut these now. Next, I cut out all the black strips that I needed. I'm substituting black for red since I'm doing a Halloween version, and these are what um, the prints that I'm using look like. I cut some from Fat Quarters and some from scraps that I had. They all look really cute together. Now I'm working on cutting out the whites that I need for the nine patch unit. I have a bunch of fat quarters that came with this Halloween bundle here, and um, I added these two from my sash. And then what I did was I saw that these prints were not a true white. So I keep like a bunch of white varieties in my stash. And what I did was I matched them to an ivory. So I am gonna use a scrappy background, but for these nine patch units, I decided to use solid ivory. So I'm gonna set these all aside for making the other blocks in this quilt. And for the nine patches, I'm gonna cut my strips from my solid ivory. Now I'm ready to piece these and it's the same process as I showed in the video of making these nine patches. I'm doing yellow, ivory, and black. First, I'm just gonna put the ivory on top of the yellow and strip pieces all the way down. And I did um, forget to mention in the last video that when I'm doing strips like this, I usually turn my stitch length down. Um, it really does depend on your machine. On this Bernina, I use like a 1.9 to a two, something like that. On um, some of my other machines, like a two was kind of wide, so I might go to like a 1.8. Um, but it just does, it does depend and the reason why I do that is because when you're going to cut these units apart um, Where you cut With the ruler and the rotary cutter Those stitches can come open. So if they're really wide um, like the length of the stitch is really long then um, your pieces can start to separate and it does that kind of like pretty quickly so here you can see a little better on this yellow side this is what my stitch length kind of looks like. So if I make a cut across here, this stitch might open up, but if I'm really gentle with it and um, I don't handle it too much, the next one shouldn't. But if your stitches are, the length is, is like long or longer than this, um, those stitches can open up and it can cause the one next to it to open and the one next to it to open. So I usually turn my stitch length down and then also I'm like really gentle when I handle these. So, that they don't come open. And I try not to, like if I needed to pause, I would pause before I cut. Like I would take a big, I would, if I needed a break, I would take a break before I cut them. And kind of like once I cut them, I start piecing them. Like I don't leave these around that long because with movement and um, being bumped and time, those stitches can come undone on the edges there after you cut these units into pieces um, and they can come undone. So that's kind of like, if I need to take a break, I do it before I cut them. And then once I cut them, I just start piecing the nine patches right away, just so that um, there's less of a chance of those coming undone. Now I have, this is one of my, and these prints are like so, so, so cute. I love how seeing how each of these, many of these prints are from the collection um, called Tiny Frights by Ruby Star Society. Uh, and then I have also thrown in some for my stash, but these two are both from that collection and they're so cute. I love these little candies. There's like an angry one somewhere, but I don't think it's on this strip. These are all happy little faces. And so that's my um, 
my A strips. For my B strips, it's um, two ivories and then a black. So I have one of those to piece also. I have this gold star one that's gonna be my black here and that's not in this collection. This is um, from the Starry collection and I've had that just um, be like saved. So I pulled it out for this quilt because I thought that looked really nice. And so now I'll just put the black on top of the white and piece this into a strip and then I will piece the other white on top of the black. So this is pieced and as I said, I'm just gonna put the um, other ivory strip on top and then I'll piece along this one. And this will give me my B strip. Here's what my B strip looks like then. So I have the black down the middle. Okay, so here I have all my strips pieced. Let me show you some of them, they're so cute. Here's one of them. This one brings a little hot pink in. I think I'm gonna use hot pink somewhere later in the quilt, so I thought that'd be really cute too. Here, I like these owls and um, this, this spider web is an old one that I've had and it's a glow in the dark, so I thought that would be really cute. This one, um, these gold pluses I thought looked nice. And so these are really cute and I'm gonna mix and match them throughout the nine patches so it's really nice and scrappy. And then my B strips, you, it, these are the same blacks that are in the A strips, so you've kind of already seen them, but I think this is gonna be really cute and I'm not really, I actually really don't love Halloween at all, uh, but I love quilts. So um, a Halloween quilt sounded like fun to make. I usually get pretty daring when I'm cutting these. When I first started quilting, I was not very daring. <laughs> I kind of did things the way that I thought I was supposed to do them. And um, I don't do that anymore. I just kind of go with the flow and do what I like. So here I don't have these strips ironed. I have them just laying as flat as I can manage it. And then I have them stacked. So I have two stacked in each one. And the way I stack them is I match the edge of the fabric with the seam line that I just um, sewed. And then very carefully, I'm just gonna come down this line and I cut um, at the increments that we need for whatever size you're making for this quilt. If I notice my pieces are starting to become crooked, I'll stop and I will adjust that piece um, so that they're not crooked. Like I'll cut off the crooked part and start fresh. I try to pay attention so that if that is happening, I notice it before any of my pieces get crooked and also so that I'm not wasting um, fabric because if I'm not careful and some of them are crooked, then I, I lose those pieces. And I'm using more fabric than I need because I want this to be really scrappy. So it's not that big of a deal for me in this quilt, but for a quilt when I have like just the right amount of fabric, um, I don't want that to happen because, you know, it could make me lose some of my fabric and then I'd have to get more. But you can see here, I have my little increments. This little like um, bend there is just temporarily where it was folded, but that will come out. So. I have all my units cut from these strips and I will be able to start piecing my nine patches once I get everything cut out. But these are so adorable. Some of these I will lose in um, my seam allowance, but some of them will just ha be, happen to be in the block and I just think they're so cute. And of course I'm gonna use this print. Like this is a good one. This is like right in the middle. Almost looks fussy cut but I will um, use these in some other places and then I will bring in these really cute fabrics to it too. I went ahead and I cut all my strips and I brought some over to my sewing machine here. So let's piece a nine patch and see how these turn out. I'll start with this one. And when I do a scrappy quilt like this, I love just seeing how each block turns out, like it increases the fun for me so much. And even though we're making some, this, this quilt has a lot of repeat blocks, uh, it just makes it fun because each block is a little bit different with its own personality. So I always think that that's something really fun with scrappy quilting. 
And of course, not all the quilts I make are scrappy. There's plenty of quilts that I just use um, like one collection for, or even I do a lot of two color quilts. I love those. So it's kind of, um, I like to mix it up and do a little bit of everything because sometimes I like the two color. It's soothing to work with only two colors and to not have to cut out a million colors. Um, I like the scraps because it's fun to see how each block will turn out. Um, like that's so cute. And, um, you know, I, everything in between. I don't have one single style. I like to do it a lot of different ways. And I actually think that's what keeps it so interesting for me. And that's why I love to make quilts because I don't do everything the same every single time. So there's a lot of variety. And of course, when I'm gonna make these blocks myself, when it's just me, um, I will chain piece these. So um, right now I'm just doing one at a time to kind of show you how cute these are turning out. But when I am making them myself, I will chain piece all of these. And here they are. And oh, that's the other thing, I get asked this, do I pay attention to directional fabric? I don't, uh, I don't, period. <laughs> but especially in a quilt like this, where the blocks, after we make these, these are gonna be used in other blocks and they're all gonna be turned different ways. Like I'm, I am happy to have it like this and like this, because you never know in the final quilt, the way that you're using it, the way if this is a square, so it can be turned many ways. Um, one time you might put it on yourself or hang it up or put it on your couch and that's the right way. And then another time you might turn it and that's the right way. So I let my directional fabric just go any which way. Um, and I'm always happy with those results, but you can choose to do whatever you like. And so there you have it. We have these fun little nine patches with these Halloween prints and um, I sure have a lot of fun making each one of these and seeing what they look like. If you have any questions on this week's assignments, just let me know. And if not, I'll see you back here in a few days when we start week two. Thanks for following along.